What is hidden inside the Sahara Desert? Every one of you must have heard of the Sahara Desert, but have you ever heard of the ancient city Atlantis? Well, I guess not. So get ready to have some mind-blowing knowledge of the Earth's history. Hello and welcome to Brainy Peach. Today I will tell you about the amazing secret of the Sahara Desert and what's hidden beneath its sand dunes. So, before any further delay, let's get started. Look at this picture. This is not some space project base camp plan of 2050. This is a picture of Atlantis City, which existed 10,000 years ago. The structure of this city amazes the engineers and architects till date. A city like Atlantis would have been difficult to make even in today's era when we have the latest technology and instruments. But the fact that it was made 10,000 years ago literally drops everyone's jaw. Do you see these rings? Every ring was made using a different metal and every ring had a water dam of its own. Due to the innovation in use of metal to make the impossible possible, the people of this small island were becoming undefeatable. They defeated and captured many great countries of Europe and Africa. They had plenty of gold, silver, diamonds, and other precious stones, which made them very rich. These people were tough, rich, clever, hard workers, and, well, what not. Everything was possible for these people. They were living the time of their lives. But all of this didn't last long. It just took one day to make one of the greatest cities that ever existed disappear. The waves of the sea weren't kind that day. The waves came and swallowed Atlantis. One bad day, and the world never saw Atlantis again. Is this really what happened, or just a story? Is it true that a city of such greatness just vanished in a day because of a tsunami? Is Atlantis still resting in the depths of the oceans? Well, many explorers have been trying to find the remains of Atlantis and failing to succeed. Some people claim to have found some of the architectural remains of the Atlantis city in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean and Antarctica. But is Atlantis really resting there? Well, hold your curiosities. I will tell you today where exactly Atlantis is. It's not underneath any ocean, but it is resting under the sand dunes of the Great Sahara Desert. Yes, that's right. So how did this happen? Let's go 2,000 years back in time and meet a great Athenian philosopher, Plato. He wrote two books, Timaeus and Critias in which he wrote everything about Atlantis. According to Plato, Atlantis was a small and very attractive island near the Strait of Gibraltar. In the center of the city, it was the castle of their king, surrounded by three water rings and two rings of land. The structure of this city was not only attractive, but very defensive against the enemy invasions. Because to capture the castle, one had to cross the rings of lands and water, which made it quite difficult for the enemies. Not only the structure, but Atlantis had a very strong army, which fought so ruthlessly that enemy soldiers used to be afraid to go and fight the people of Atlantis. Its army had a very huge advantage. Every other nation had weapons made of stone in those days, but the people of Atlantis used to have a metal named Orichalcum. They used to make their weapons with this metal, which made their weapons more deadly. Not only that, they had huge amounts of precious stones, gold, silver, and whatnot. Atlantis was not only a rich city, but a city which was way ahead of its time. The people of Atlantis built pipelines to supply water to their houses in that era when the other world carried water in buckets to their houses. They had built dams on the water rings, just like the dams we build nowadays. They used to have a sewage system when the rest of the world didn't have a clue what a sewage system is. I need an entire day to describe the greatness of this city. But sadly, 
All of this greatness came to an end. A tsunami came, and the great city of Atlantis was swallowed by the tsunami. Atlantis vanished from the world map in a single day. People to date try to find Atlantis. Some claim that it is in the Bahamas. Some say it is in Spain. Some believe it is under Antarctica. All of this sounds like a story of Plato, right? He could have made up all of this and wrote it down in his books. If he were right, where is Atlantis? Well, the story of Plato is not self-made. According to our history, thousands of years ago, there was a geological phenomenon known as Meltwater Pulse 1b. In this phenomenon, the ice of the South and North Poles melted which raised the water level of the oceans by 14 meters, resulting in the drowning of many small islands. Well, to everyone's shock, this phenomenon in history occurred at the exact same time when a tsunami ate the Atlantis. Could be a coincidence, right? Well, after meltwater pulse 1b, the axial tilt of the Earth increased a little bit. Coincidentally, the area where Atlantis existed started to receive more sunlight. Over the course of centuries, water dried up, and once again the world saw the great city of Atlantis, but this time in the form of a wreck. But where? Yes, you guessed it right. The wreck of the Atlantis was found in a desert of Africa. I know what you guys are wondering. How can a tsunami hit a desert? Earlier, people used to draw their surroundings on the walls and the rocks. Geologists found some paintings of elephants, giraffes, and hippopotamus on the rocks of the Sahara Desert. These are the animals which are not found in a desert. Then, how come someone drew a picture of them in a desert? Moreover, pictures of trees, greenery, and beaches were also found. This is the Rikat structure in the country of Mauritania in Africa. I think the resemblance between this structure and the great city of Atlantis is uncanny. The amount of rings of both the Atlantis and this Rikat structure is same and surprisingly their sizes are exactly same as well. According to Plato, the size of Atlantis was 127 stadia. At the time of Plato, a stadium had a size of approximately 607 feet. This gives the size of Atlantis to be 23.049 kilometers, according to Plato. Whereas the size of this Rikat structure is 23.5 kilometers, exactly the same. Not only that, Plato also said that Atlantis had a mountain range around it. The pictures taken from a satellite reveal the existence of a mountain range around the Rikat structure. Moreover, there are still some springs of freshwater in the center of the Rikat structure which make it more believable that the Rikat structure is actually the wreck of Atlantis. Well, one can easily deny all of this as a coincidence. Well, I've got some more facts for you. This Rakat structure is in the country of Mauritania. The people of this country are called Berber. Their elders were called Mori, and the first king of these Mori people was Atlas. Can you guess now? Plato said in his book that the first king of Atlantis was Atlas. Moreover, the city was given the name Atlantis after their king Atlas. There's more to it. Herodotus, known as the father of history, made the most accurate world map of that time in 450 BC. In his map, the place where Atlantis was mentioned, today we have Mauritania, and to be precise, the Rakat structure at the exact same place. To be honest, the Rakat structure has not been researched well, but scientists did find some water stones and skeletons of fish here. All of this couldn't be a coincidence, right? In my opinion, the Rakat structure is the greatest city of Atlantis. What's your opinion? Were all of these facts convincing for you? Do tell me in the comment section. Every comment is precious to me, and I do read them all. Well, that was it for today. Do smash that subscribe button. 
press the bell icon as well so you don't miss out on my future historical, geographical, and informative videos. If you liked today's video or learned anything new, please leave a like. Share this video with your friends and family, and if someone is willing to have a trip to the Rakat structure, do take me with you. <laughs> take good care of yourself. Till next time, goodbye.